Can we take the Laplace transform of a delta function? Well, yes and no. No, because the delta function is not even a function, so it does not satisfy the requirements. And fortunately, also yes, otherwise it would be a very short video. We can use a limit process to define the Laplace transform. And this yields a very easy result, in, in fact, so we do not worry too much about the mathematical subtleties and use the outcome that we will derive in this video. So, what is the plan? First, we compute the Laplace transform of this d tos of d minus d0. Those are fine, those are just normal functions, like those were the rectangles, which became uh, smaller and higher. So we can do those. And then we take the limit tall to zero and see what we get. And that is what we will define as our Laplace transform of the delta function. So that's the plan. So step one, take the Laplace transform of those d talls. Uh, so what do we need to do? Fortunately, that is not so difficult. We put the d tall in. Uh, again, the integral from zero to infinity and e to the power minus st. Uh, so what do we do? This d uh, tall of uh, t minus t zero is zero except in the inter interval centered around t zero uh, with with uh, t zero minus tall and t zero plus tall. That's what we do over here. And there the function equals one over two tall and everywhere else it is zero. So our integral becomes easy in that sense because we only have an e to the power minus st which we need to integrate with respect to t. So that gives us as an antiderivative a minus one over s times this exponential and the one over two tall just survives uh, between the boundaries. Now we plug in the boundaries. We keep the minus one over two tall s. Now on the upper boundary, we get an e to the power minus s t zero times e to the power minus s tall, which is over here. And on the lower boundary, we also get the e to the power minus st0, I took it already out, times e to the power plus s tall. And now you see you have an e to the power s tall minus e to the power mi minus s tall divided by 2, which is exactly a sine hyperbolic of s tall. And we have still an s tall left and an e to the power minus st0. So that's the first step, the Laplace transform of d tall of t minus t0. Second step, what happens if we take tall to zero? Now the tall is only there, so let's see whether we can take tall to zero. We have, of course, then zero divided by zero. So what do we do? We want to use L'Hopital's rule. So first of all, we set, we set uh, s times tall equals u to clean up some of the mess. So then we have a sine hyperbolic of u over u. Use L'Hopital's rule, the derivative of sine hyperbolic u equals cosine hyperbolic u, derivative of u equals 1. So we have cosine hyperbolic u divided by 1. We can take u to 0, gives us just a 1. So that's this part. So if we take uh, the uh, limit of tall to 0 of the full thing, we are just left with the e to the power minus st0. So that is what we will take as our Laplace transform of the delta function. A plus transform of delta function is just e to the power minus s t0. That is what we will define as its, as its Laplace transform. Now, how do we use it? How can we use this effectively? Now, what's going on effectively is the following. Like if you have the Laplace transform of some function times some delta function. Now, plug it in over here. Now, what's going on? This uh, delta function is almost everywhere zero. So, except at t equals t0. So you basically can replace the function value of f of t. It doesn't matter what it is. It only matters what it is at t0, because everywhere else the integral is 0 anyway. So you can replace the f of t by f of t0. But then you can uh, take it in front. Uh, you do the same uh, trick over here. You can replace it t by t0 over there as well. Take everything now in front of the integral. Now you can do it, because it's constant. This integral is uh, by definition 1, so you get f of t0 times e to the power minus st0. So what does this delta function do? You can uh, 
go back to this step over here, what does the delta function do? It eats the integral and it sets the, the, the integration variable t to t0. So that is how the delta function works. So a delta function inside an integral is actually very nice. It cancels the integral and basically sets the integration variable everywhere to t0. So that, uh, so that is how we can use a delta function and use its Laplace transform.